What are you talking about? I'm Karen Cockbinner and I'm not miserable. I'm happy, see? Ah, I've got a Karen smile. That means I'm happy and I'm not miserable. I've got my cats. I've got my boxed wine. I've got my TPS reports that I have to turn in on Monday. I'm not a slave. I'm completely free. I've had so many men run through my body it's not even funny. And now I have this permanent Karen smile, see? Not miserable. You keep talking about Gen Z Kelly and your little Walmart vest and oh, how, how come you're talking about young girls? What is what are you a pedo? Yeah, so happy. Not miserable at all. <laughs> oh boy. Gentlemen, Western women are completely miserable. It's beyond. I've never seen anything like this in my entire life. Just look at my permanent like I can't even <laughs> They're so far miss I had to do a, a vlog on this, guys. The, the misery that they emanate is unreal on all levels. We're talking even the pretty girls, miserable. The average girls, miserable. The Karens, miserable. You know what? I'm going to go away from this park. <laughs> See, you are a pedo. <laughs> oh, the Karens, man. They get so mad about every little goddamn thing. Well, we got to get into it today. We got a donkey punch, the like button, finger the subscribe button, comment in the comment section, share this video, etc., etc., etc. Man, the Karens are taking over. See, what a lot of guys don't understand, a lot of you guys say, oh, well, you know, I'll just get me a white woman. Right? It's all my black guys out there. A lot of black guys think, oh, you know, I'll get a submissive little white woman. Guys, uh-uh. They're passive aggressive. They're death by a thousand cuts. They're, uh, you know, oh, you're gonna go one, do one of your little videos? And then you say, what'd you say, bitch? And they're like, nothing. Why are you being so aggro and angry at me? Constant, passive aggressive, and then gaslighting. Oh, I could do hours on how girls are miserable in the Western cities, guys. It, it's, it, it's, it's so painful. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> you know, even in the Southern states, you know, they are nicer initially there's no doubt about it you know a lot of you guys think oh you just hate western women no i don't I actually pity them a lot of the time i feel sorry for them i really do because they're so they're just they they're so far miserable that they don't even know that they're miserable right because a lot of people don't understand that that old adage misery loves company is about as real as it gets it really is especially for us that live in the western societies we have to be very mindful of their misery because if we even get into close proximity of that misery, that energy just bleeds off onto you, right? All that anger, all the venom, all the hatred, and they hold it in all day, guys. They're so bitter and hurt that they project it onto you. A lot of times they'll say, hey, you're bitter and hurt, and you'll be like, what are you even fucking talking about? The deflection is real, gentlemen. The deflection of their misery and I highly recommend that you guys stay away from the Western women because they are nothing but constant anger and vitriol it's it's always inside them and they can't get rid of it they hold it inside pretty much all day their hatred of men and you want to talk about mis misandry which is that's what it's called you know the hatred of men and how much they despise us and envy us. They're pretty much doing it all day. And then they deflect and say we're misogynists, right? Which is the hatred of women. When have we ever said anything hateful about them besides absolute honesty and told the truth about them? When have I ever said that I don't like women and that they're horrible and that they're these horrible, horrible creatures? Not at all, quite the contrary. But I will hold them accountable. I will hold them accountable and I will point out their flaws, which of course is, of course is misinterpreted to hate. Right? If you criticize them in any way, shape, or form, you're considered hateful. And that's just overly sensitive bullshit at the end of the day. Right? Have I said that women are absolute garbage? Yes, I have said that about Western women, which is true. Do I wish it on them? No, of course not. Do I hate them? Not at all. As I said earlier in this video, it more is about 
self-reflection. It's more about us understanding where we sit with them and more so about, I just feel bad for them. I really do. And the only way to get through to them is to kick the shit out of them on these videos. That's the only way you can break through, guys. Being nice about stuff and suggesting, you know, maybe we should change some specific little things. You know, maybe you want to change your tone and all this is just more pussyfooting around the obvious, obvious truth. That Western women are absolutely miserable. Completely. In general, that's how they are. And they don't even know it. I had one girl commenting on one of my other videos about how she doesn't smile. She has resting bitch face permanently because she's always thinking. And she's defending the fact that, oh, I don't need to smile 24-7. That's not what it's all about. It's that you don't even know how miserable you actually are. You've got somebody who's actually defending having resting bitch face all day. It just boggles my mind. And you guys know, deep down, the reason why I do all this is because I do give a shit about what happens in Western society. I do care, and that's why I come down so hard on the Western ladies. They need it. Because everybody has been too soft on them. Is it hate? You can call it whatever you want. It has to do with actually giving a shit and making changes. Well, that's not productive, it's negative. Guess what, jackasses? Your way hasn't worked. Being soft on little ladies, you know, you should be nicer. You should be more feminine. That shit doesn't work. And by the way, if it doesn't work out, which it's not going to anyway, for the little ladies, and no matter, look guys, it's more entertainment. The more I kick the shit out of them on the entertainment side, yeah, some of them are gonna change. Most of them will not. Most of them are going to fail. But he kills a couple of birds with one stone, which is what I love to do. It's going to entertain you guys. It's going to kick some of them into shape. It's going to snap some of these stupid-ass simp boys out of their, you know, their complete uh, delusion. And number three, it's going to get guys faster overseas. Because what it does is it speeds up the process of all of this, right? It speeds up the process. There's no doubt. So, the fact that they're miserable, it only, <laughs> it only confirms everything I've ever been saying. So, it's just, it, it is ironic, isn't it, gentlemen? It's ironic that all their little tantrums and all their silliness and all their misery leads back to them failing, as always. And they're failing, guys. The, the Western women are not winning. In what area are they winning? You have to, for example, one of the main reasons Western women are miserable is because they can't keep a man. They know it deep down, no matter how much they deflect and say, oh, my life isn't about keeping a man. Yes, it is. Because worldwide, that's what women do. They are judged on how well they keep a man. For example, if a woman gets sex from a man, she's judged as a slut. She's judged as a whore. Why? Because it's very easy for her to do. But if a guy does it, he's judged as a pimp. Because it's very hard to do. It's not easy for men to do. Do you get it? If a, for example, and here's another example. If a guy gets in a relationship with a woman, why do other men always give him shit? Hey man, what are you doing with it? Because giving our commitment away is very important. That's why other men give men who get into relationship shit, right? And if he gets sex, he's seen as a badass. He's as a player, whatever. You get what I mean? The bottom line is women getting a man's commitment is the highest honor that she can receive, no matter what she says. And it's never gonna change. To all the little ladies who watch me, which a lot of them do, more and more do, the percentage has gone up, they're gonna to have to realize that our commitment is that important to them, no matter what they say. And that's one of the main reasons they are miserable because they have nobody guiding them. They've had nobody, they have nobody reject, uh, directing them any way in life. They're lost. Haven't you guys looked around recently? They sure do follow us a lot though. They follow everything we do, everything they say everything we say and essentially they want to get credit for it well over here you don't get credit for 
doing less than nothing. <laughs> because I'll, I'll tell you one thing, the American ladies are very, very entitled and very, very lazy. We don't give you guys credit over here for shit that's just average. Not over here. I don't care how many simps are in your DMs kissing your ass. We don't do that over here. Not on this channel. <sighs> it is fascinating, though. The levels of misery. And there are definitely met levels of misery, gentlemen. There's the initial level. That initial level that hits right when they're a teenager. When they realize that they are essentially just a, just a hole. And they realize this more and more at a young age, guys. You've got porn stars now that literally are already ran through before they become porn stars at 18. It's, it's never been like this before. And it's because the little ladies have access to all these things at a younger and younger age. For example, a lot of girls that are in their mid-teens, 15, 14, 16, are getting on dating apps and lying about their age. It's pretty easy to do. And you'll see that their age on the dating app will be 23, 24. And she'll say, hey, I'm only 20, right? And you'll go, wait, 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 wait. This doesn't make any sense. Oh, well, I can't change my age in here. Well, duh. It's because you lied. Do you see what I mean? And this is another reason why they're losing. They're getting on these apps at very young ages, guys, and being traumatized at very young ages by either hooking up with guys much older than them or, you know, just getting tons of, you know, dick pics and all this other crap. And it does screw them up, gentlemen. It screws them up badly. They are getting exposed to porn at a younger and younger age. It messes up their heads, guys. They never come back from this stuff. They never come back from it. It's not like, oh, they just all of a sudden snap out of it. No. This stuff really warps them at a young, young age. And they don't know how to deal with it. Once again, because they have no direction from us. No direction from men. They are punishing themselves at a much, much higher rate. You see tattoos on girls as young as 16, 17 these days, all over on their necks. Guys, this isn't normal mentally sound behavior this is mental illness and it's only going to get worse for a long time coming which means their misery levels are going to go up higher and higher so that first stage of misery starts when they're young when that first chad or tyrone or whoever runs through them and then kicks their ass to the curb which a lot of guys do and not only that they these women have access to higher and higher tier men through social media that they normally wouldn't. Guys, back in the day, before social media, before online, before all this stuff, a woman had access to guys with maybe in a five, 15 mile radius, right? So they were much more grounded. These, this, is, this is where I'm at. This is how attractive I am. This is what I can get. This is what I can hope to get. Now she has exposure to men all across the world. And it's been this way for a while. And they're doing it at younger and younger ages. Now, what does this do to them psychologically? They have simps in their DMs kissing their asses. And they're like a four or three on the... Um, you know, they're not even hot. So you've got literally every girl that you go up to now thinking she's a 10. Oh, I'm a 10. <laughs> I'm an 8. I'm a 9. I'm a 10. And she's a fucking walrus. Right? Reality and fantasy are two separate things and the more you live in fantasy the more and more you withdrawn you become from society you become socially inept you start to become more of like a pariah or an outcast and very bizarre and that's what is happening at younger and younger ages to these girls they have no clue they're completely lost they don't have one boyfriend taking them through life getting married to me. They're getting ran through at younger and younger ages, guys. And then when that happens, guess what? Now they're fucked. Their perception of reality is now warped. They are now screwed up. And there's no way to repair them. Because a lot of guys want to come in and fix them and, you know, you know, I'll wife you up and all this. 
you came from this horrible background and you know he broke your heart that doesn't work and it's on a much grander scale now now guys used to do that back in the past captain we used to call them captain save hose and they used to jump in and say oh I'll save you but now you've got it on such a grand scale that she cannot even get with the sim even if he wants to because she has so many other guys giving her virtual attention do you see how you guys it's so they are so far gone that we have to completely reset we have to wait until all the little western women die off and they learn their lesson and they go without guys i i wanted to record this the other day but i literally saw a western woman in probably her late 40s early 50s sitting on her ass with her legs splayed out she she had her hair done with sunglasses on and she was a white woman in the suburbs on the corner with all of her belongings out on the street do you guys understand that i've we've never seen this before in history western women out on the streets homeless it, it, it's it's guys i've never seen anything it's fucking crazy they are so far in delusion and so about constantly leveling up hyper hypergamy that they're literally out on the streets now i've seen now i'm not to get racial but literally i've seen black women out on the streets i've seen hispanic women out on the streets but now you know i see a 50 something year old white woman out on the streets it's crazy guys all ages all flavors these women are in big fucking trouble and they're and her face was that miserable ass wrinkled put sour puss that they all have and it's not going to get any better they're gray divorcing guys they're divorcing guys in their 60s 50s 70s they think that they can level do you see what i'm guys the reason why they're divorcing men and the reason why they're getting away from them is because they think that they can level up at 50 40 60 70 do you understand how fucking crazy that is do you understand how detached from reality that is over here we deal in reality guys we deal in the real world we don't deal in this fucking crazy town looney tunes cartoon land but that's what it is right now you wonder why they're miserable of all ages and they're all competing for the same guys on the apps all competing for the same guy same top tier guys see he, here's what's really funny to all you average guys you guys are going to get a kick out of this when they fail with the top tier guys and then they try to get with you later on and you don't take them what happens to them reality smacks them right in the face it slaps the shit out of them and then of course they get back on the apps and they cry and they ask the simps for help and all this guys reality is coming and kevin samuel said this many many times about winter coming it's already here and it's taking no prisoners because you can ignore you can ignore the effects you can ignore reality but you can't ignore the effects of reality and reality is a lot of these women bit off way more than they could chew they got ran through by top tier guys and now they're they're done the game is over do you see why they're so miserable guys and it's only going to get worse because generation z is getting ran through faster than probably all the other generations combined They've got the snuffleupagus eyelashes. They got the tattoos. They got the thousand cock stare. In their fucking teens, guys. In their early 20s. Their prime years. That they're supposed to be fertile. Their prime fertile years. What, what are they going to do after that? Do you see what I'm saying? Now do you see why I'm so hard on them? Because it's going to take a sledgehammer to the head. To knock some fucking sense into them. Now, why do I want to do that? Because I want the future generation. I'm not doing this for the, the current generations, guys. I'm here to let the future generations know when they see this shit, what happens 
when you deviate from the plan. That's what all this boils down to, guys. We are here to sl to fucking, first of all, ha be entertained, laugh a lot, make fun of them, enjoy ourselves, and understand that it's fucked for them. And I know some of you guys do want to stay with the Western women. You want to fix it. I get it. Unfortunately, your efforts are not going to work. And here's the reason why. Because the families are the ones that are out of whack. The families are broken. And only the families can fix this. Only the family unit. And mainly the mothers. If the mothers can't keep their daughters in check, their granddaughters, etc., etc., nothing's ever going to change, gentlemen. Nothing. It has nothing to do with the men. The men do not keep the women in check. The women keep the women in check. Go to any other society worldwide, you will see that the women keep the women in check. That's how it goes, guys. You know, I was watching one of these podcasts the other day, and they were talking about, I'm an alpha female. Okay, who do you lead? You're full of shit. There's no such thing as an alpha female. Who does she lead? Nobody. If you want to talk about alpha female, there's, no, there's really no such thing as an alpha female, but let's say we're, we, take, uh, we take an example of lionesses. Lionesses keep, there's usually a, I think there's like one or a couple that usually keep the other lionesses in check. You're not going to be leading any dudes. Do you see what I mean? I th they're very confused, guys. They're, ve they're very removed far from reality. You see what I mean? There's no way for them to come back. Once women get outside, once women are treated a certain way, they believe they deserve that for, li for life. They believe that they're supposed to keep being upgraded and upgraded and upgraded. So, if, for example, let's say some dude flies out some whale and now they hook up. He dumps her ass, which they normally do. Now she believes she deserves that top tier treatment from now on. Because, and you know what I mean? And but guys, they're not wifing these girls up. That's my point. They're not keeping these girls. They're running through them and then tossing them to the side of the road. It, we're at a point of hyper hypergamy. Hyper hypergamy. Don't get down, guys. The guys who are average, my below average guys, average guys, a little bit above average, don't worry. You're going to get plenty of ass. You're going to be perfectly fine if you want it. If you don't want it, don't worry about it. My suggestion, stay focused on your purpose. You're going to get Gen Alpha. What's after Alpha? Beta? Generation Beta? I don't know. <laughs> Wouldn't that be ironic? Generation Beta. Ha! Oh, you're a Beta. You're not Alpha. But that's where it's going, guys. This is... I'm... I'm here from the future. I've been... <laughs> I've always been able to see ahead, guys. I've always been able to understand what's going to happen, where it's going. It's just because he, history always repeats itself. That's just how things are. So don't worry about little Gen Z. Don't worry about them. You're going to be getting Gen Alpha and beyond. And especially, I guess after Alpha, Generation Beta, they're probably going to be the conservative generation, not Generation Alpha. Gener generation Alpha is going to do a little bit of what Gen Z did and then kind of rebel after that. And that's, that's the biggest problem. The Western women are miserable because they're in the spirit of rebellion. The spirit of Jezebel. They're rebelling. Just like all the previous generations have done. Except it was the silent generation. Then after that, the baby boomers started rebelling. And they fucked up everything. The silent generation is partially to blame too because they let, them, they let the baby boomers get away with it. And now we have to pick up the pieces. It's our, it's our responsibility. And that's another reason why I do these streams, guys. It's my responsibility to be, to have you guys be heard, your vo voices be heard, and you guys to understand where we're at and where we're going in society. And whether you want to be a part of it or not. A lot of you guys are saying, fuck this, I'm out of here. A lot of you guys are on the passport, bro, kicking. That's not going anywhere anytime soon. A lot of you guys have moved overseas or you've got your Filipinas or you got your Latinas. You got your Colombiana. You got your Venezuelan. That is a big ass helicopter. Holy shit, wish you guys could see. I, no, you wouldn't be able to see. He's moving too fast. But the bottom line is 
on this channel, we're going to be going against the grain. We're going to be going against a lot of people. And they're going to get pissed about it. Especially the Western ladies. They don't like accountability because they've never been held accountable. A lot of their parents have told them they could do whatever they want and get away with it. And society has let them get to a certain amount, you know, a certain amount that they've gotten away with. But accountability is coming, whether they like it or not, because as you, you know, don't accept accountability, you keep losing, you keep failing, you keep finding ways to fail. And that's essentially where the little Western ladies are at right now. They're in a world of failure, a world of hurt, and it's not going to get any better anytime soon. Now, a lot of you guys are wondering, what should you do about the little Western ladies being miserable? The best thing that you guys can do at this point in time, especially if you're in Western society, is to focus on your purpose. And the reason being is because if you do that, you get only benefits. The re and what I mean by that, like, for example, is when you're focusing on your purpose, you're taking away all your attention from Western ladies. And that's one of the best things that you can do. Take take your attention, focus, focus it on your dreams, focus it on what you want out of life. Why? Because if we give Western women more attention, all we're doing is just feeding into their misery. <laughs> I know that sounds ironic, and some of you guys say, well, maybe I should cold approach, maybe I should do this and that. You gotta leave them alone, guys. It's gonna be better for your mental well-being. Well, what do I wanna do if I get laid? Guys, there's a lot of options for getting laid. And a lot of you guys have discounted the foreign women, foreign liberal and foreign traditional. When I go over foreign liberal women, those girls are readily available for sex. They're actually easier to get probably than the Western women, mainly because they're a little bit more grounded in reality, which we've gone over several times in the past, how far gone the Western women are from reality. You've got the foreign liberal women who have much more structured families. They usually have a nurturing mother and father. They usually have some sort of support system. They usually are much more on the straight and narrow. They usually are much more sound mentally. They understand reality, gentlemen. And that's what you guys are discounting when it comes to the Western women. Those of you that think Western women are still good, very few of you, but they are, their mental system is gone. Their mental support is gone. Their mental acuity, their focus is gone. And one of the main reasons is because they've been torn away from the men. They've been told they're strong and independent. They don't need a man, etc., etc. The issue with that is without men to guide them, they are lost. They are angry. They are confused. I've gone over this in several videos, but women operate kind of on this negative feedback loop where they're always in a state of anxiety. Have you guys ever noticed? This is going to fascinate you. And I've read about it in several studies. What happens is women always need to constantly prop themselves up. You'll hear it all the time is, oh, well, I'm beautiful and I'm confident and I'm special. She'll say that one minute and then the next minute she'll be completely sad, miserable, depressed, suicidal. You guys think you're suicidal. You think you've got issues. Nobody has more issues than a Western woman, mentally, because they really don't have the support of one man to keep them um, to be happy. They're not getting attention from one man. Um, some guys will say, hey, well, she's got simps in her DMs all day. And this means that she's got all the attention she needs and she's winning. No, she's not, guys. That attention doesn't mean jack shit to her. It gives her a little tiny boost. Now, if she had that attention from her Alpha Chad, her Alpha Adam, I'm Alpha Adam! I got balls on my truck! That's right, Alpha Adam! I'm very similar to Karen Cockbender, but I'm a real man. I'm an Alpha. What are you, a beta? Yeah, I, I get all my talking points from Data Coach Dan. I know better. I deepen my voice to try to sound more alpha. <laughs> They're not getting that attention that they want from one man, guys. This kills women inside. It destroys them. It makes them upset. Have you got, haven't you guys ever noticed? I don't know if you've noticed this, but when you talk to a traditional foreign woman who has a man and she's been with him for years and she's like, I support him and all this stuff, she's content with him. There's no bucking. 
There's no getting on Instagram and finding attention from 80,000 other dudes. She doesn't operate like that. And the reason being is because she's, she understands this is the best she can do. She's not leveling up. There is no hyper hypergamy overseas, guys. They want one goddamn man who's a good man. That's it. They want that one guy. They don't need attention from 80 other fucking dudes. Do you get it? Why do I always shout when I come over this? <laughs> I start shouting. <laughs> There's a Western woman staring at me. She's like, what the fuck? Why is that guy shout? <laughs> oh, there's so, again. <laughs> oh, I have too much fun doing these videos. I gotta get angry. <laughs> but anyway, they don't want attention from all these other fucking guys. Period. They don't need that attention from all the other dudes. They've got their attention from their men. They are content. They are happy. They are focused. Their focus is just him. And that's why they're so goddamn... If you ever talk to a foreign traditional woman, guys, you will see that they are always smiling. Oh, my husband came home today and he said something funny. They're always... Guys, they're happy. I made him lunch today and he was so happy. This is their life. Their life revolves around one guy. I know this may be a little bit new to some of you guys, but if a woman does not have one guy to focus all of her energy on, she is miserable. Miserable. Even the career woman. Haven't we learned this by far, guys? By this time? Sh shouldn't we already be knowing that the career women are never happy? No, that's not true. I'm happy. I got my, my box wine, blah, 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 blah. I, 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 I take the box and I just drink myself to death. Carrie Cockbender style. Haven't we noticed, guys, that the career women are completely sad, upset? They have, and by the way, it's funny, but a lot of them are attracted to their bosses. A lot of them find the boss to be attractive because that's who they're working for. They've got one man to... Guys, you guys already know. A lot of you guys already know. Women cannot serve two masters. Only one. And when they've got a boss, that is the man in their life. Work husbands, whatever they call it. This is their focus. Do you see why Western women are so upset? They're so mad at the world. They've been enslaved, gentlemen. And now there's nothing they can do about it. Do you see why? Do you see why I feel sorry for them sometimes? I'm like, Jesus Christ, you're pathetic. And, and another, <laughs> because <laughs> remember, okay, so we talked about the first time that they really become miserable, right? They get they get ran through by that first Chad, by the first Tyrone. The second time they become miserable, that second stage. We're gonna, you know what? I'm gonna write this out in phases, guys, for real. That second stage of misery comes when they realize that they have to put in effort that they have to work this is a pivotal stage it's usually their late teens when they start getting really like pretty and lots of guys are after them and you know dirty dms and all sorts of nasty shit they start to realize i can either be a pretty girl and get what i want that way or i'm gonna have to put in some work and a lot of the gen z girls are just choosing the lazy path obviously now, why does this make them miserable? Because now they realize that's their only worth, guys. They start to realize this is all I have to offer. Guys, and none of them, the, it, it hurts so badly because they realize none of them want to be with them. And of course, they rationalize it and say, well, I don't want to be with you anyway. <laughs> you see, do you see, do you get, are you guys getting the levels of sickness? I don't want him anyway. I'm Karen Cockbender. I don't need a man. No, you're rationalizing the fact that you can't keep one or get one. Well, you know, this makes me even more mad. I'm going to write. I'm writing a letter. Let me talk to your manager. Do you see the second stage of misery starts to really kill them inside? That's a badass motorcycle. This, the second stage of misery just starts to grate on them and, and it just whittle away at their spirit. They now realize, not only am I ran through, I can't keep Chad, I can't keep my ideal man. 
my one guy, I can't keep him. But now, stage two, I can't be seen as more than a fucking hole. This is where reality really starts to sink in, guys. Late teens, early 20s, they start to realize I don't have anything to offer a guy. I can't keep one. Now, some of it, some of them have this push back to mid 20s to late te- uh, 20s because they don't, you know, they're they're more hopeful. They're more in delusion. They get a lot of simps in their DMs. So they get this pushback further and further, which is another reason why, guys, a lot of women push back relationships to further and further back. They think there's going to be a simp at the end of the rainbow because they got a lot of this support early on, right? It's interesting, isn't it? Guys, I've broken this down to literally a science. I'm going to be writing reports on this shit. I'm going to do a whole th- a thesis, hypo- you know, a whole scientific paper on this crap. But yeah. They get the attention early on and they think, you know, okay, I can wait. I can wait another five years. But guys, once that attention starts drying up, once that second ball of misery starts coming, they go, ooh, ooh, I got to settle down now. That's when you'll see them pushing for relationships. Ah, it's fascinating, isn't it? They start pushing for the relationship when they, when that attention starts drying up, when that, when they're, uh, um, the thought of not being able to keep one guy starts creeping in. Now they start panicking. It's fascinating, isn't it? It's all psychological, guys. I'm glad I took I took a ton of psychology classes in college. I never majored in it. I was going to minor in that crap. But I was like, nah, fuck it. I, I'd rather do business. But yeah, they start to realize that the well is drying up, the attention well. And I got to settle down now. And that anxiety loop starts kicking in. This is the second stage of misery. Now, (laughs) the one that a lot of you guys have seen with the Karens, stage three misery, is a fascinating one. Because this is the one where they're all either pre, they're about to hit the, you know, fuck it, I'm going to go up this hill. I feel like going up a hill. They're either pre-wall or they're going to be, they're right at the wall, post-wall. That third stage of misery. Now, why do I say it's in between pre and post? Because this is where they realize that they've run out of options. That there are no, there is no rainbow. There, there's no, there's no sympathy in the room. Because they realize that it's too late. There's this point where they, it, click, they, it clicks in their mind that I'm not going to get a man. And it's never going to happen. And this is a this third stage of misery, guys, hits them like a ton of bricks. They realize that nothing they do, nothing they say, no amount of simps, no amount of attention. Damn, it's pretty nice. Though. I'll show you guys. I'm gonna walk back anyway. Fuck it. I'm gonna go work out. But they realize that this third stage is usually pre-wall, kind of right at the wall, or immediately post-wall. They realize, fuck. I've got no options left to getting a man or keeping a man. Now, mind you, this is where they start bucking and they say, well, I never needed a man. You know, I don't need a man to define me. All this other crap, all this rationalization, which none of which is true. It's all lies to make themselves feel better, right? They're trying to make themselves feel better. They're rationalizing their bad decisions. Well, at this point, this is the third stage of misery. It's that third step. They are now completely like, oh crap. I really pushed it too far. I did myself it. Now, around this time, guys, that smile. Now, this this stage can be, all these stages could be either further ahead or further behind, but that, that smile, the happiness, all of their enthusiasm, any of that that they had left is now completely gone. Usually around the third stage, that third stage hits, and now it's like, I'm done. Life is over. I can call it a life. Usually late 20s, 30, early 30s, right at that stage. That's where everything has now, I'm like, fuck. She's like, well, at least I can keep getting ran through, right? I'll, I'll keep a couple guys in rotation. She starts getting a little more desperate, maybe some lip fillers, um, boob job, stuff like that to try to extend her youth and maybe get back on the path, right? Maybe get back onto the path of 
maybe I can find a guy. They get really desperate around this situation, around this time. Um, they might relapse and go back into, it's the hope strategy, guys. They might go back into, well, you know, maybe I can find a guy who's either much older or much younger. You see what I mean? Maybe I can do it. They, they've, they've, all hope is gone. It hits them. And then uh, right after that, now they're back on the hope strategy. Oh, you know, and they really hustle. They really hustle at this point to settle down with the guy. Have you guys ever noticed around this time, late 20s, early 30s, they're like really hustling, trying to get a guy. You know, I really want to settle down. No more games. They usually say stuff like that. No more games. Um, no players. No this, no that. They are on a specific strategy to settle down with the simp. And she is not, at this stage in her life, guys, she is not going to tell you all of her past. The gangbangs that she had, the DPs, double penetration, triple penetration, you know, all the, the, all the uh, athletes she banged, all the, guys that she, all the guys who knocked her up and she had an abortion or she got an STI, right? She's got, maybe she's got the itchy scratchy. You see what I mean? She's not going to tell you all these things. Because her sole focus is to capture that simp. That her sole focus is to get that guy who she can fo focus and dedicate all her attention onto. Now, if she does succeed in this stage, which is very rare, she is going to try to give everything she's got left to this guy. The issue, the issue is they aren't able to give anything. There's nothing left to keep him there. To pair bond. To... They... they there's nothing there to stay with him. They're always going to constantly look towards greener pastures. The hypergamy is too far ingrained in their head. And it happens all the time with porn stars, with, you know, um, girls that have been ran through and used up. They can't, the, 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 even the guy can't pair bond with them. And I've seen it recently, even with Mia Khalifa, that one girl, um, that one porn star. And she got divorced right after getting married to a simp. It's just, they can't do it, guys. They can't become a good girl all of a sudden. They can't settle down. They have to have guy friends. They have to sabotage their relationship somehow. Yeah, it's sad and pathetic, guys. But this stage three, as you can see, is a big one. Now, <laughs> here's where it gets really funny. Stage four of misery. This is usually mid-30s, late-30s, maybe even early-40s, where they are just now on a war path. This is where the Karens, this is where the Karens usually come from, guys. They're miserable, they're upset, they have no, they have less and less prospects than ever before. Once in a while, they get ran through by a couple guys, uh, but they are just full of venom and hate. And you guys think it's directed mainly at us? It's not. They hate themselves. They're mad at themselves for not settling down young. They start to lash out. They start to tell young girls, hey, you shouldn't do that because guys are dogs, you know, they're, they're horrible, etc., etc. Guys are terrible. They start really, really lashing out. This is that point where they've abandoned all reason and reality. <laughs> it's, it's so bad. And the Karen starts kicking in. The, the you know, the, um, the mustache on their lip, the wrinkles, the anger. It all starts to kind of culminate into this ball of misery. Stage four, guys. It's really, it's really, really bad. You, these women you definitely want to stay away from because they not only hate themselves, they hate men, they hate everybody. And they are on the fast track, obviously, to spinster, spinsterdom, which is used to be a word back in the day, guys. We used to call it a spinster because she would be spinning, what was it, like spinning yarn or, you know, she used to be a seam. I, I don't know what, what, where it came from, but essentially she's an old maid. She has no prospects for a man. And then stage five is pretty obvious. It's post 40, like usually close to 50s. These women are completely gone, guys. These women are so far in a, like a realm of crazy and delusion that you can't break through to them at all. They're completely mental. Um, they usually, they're, they're hardcore Karens. Uh, nothing makes them happy. They've already cut their hair down to a short bob haircut. <laughs> they're venomous. They scream. They throw tantrums in public. They literally, they have no attention from one guy. So obviously they're trying to get it for the rest of society. And 
that just doesn't work. <laughs> the rest of society uh, ostracizes them, sees, sees them as a pain in the ass. And there, there's plenty of them, guys. There's more and more of them. And that's stage five is the lady I saw out on the street the other day, splayed out with her legs sp spread open, probably in her late 40s, early 50s. She was in stage five of mental illness. Is just misery. That's stage five of misery, guys. So yeah, interesting, huh? If you guys notice, it's not that complicated. It really is quite simple as to why Western women are so miserable all the way from their teens, all the way up until their 50s. There's no guy around. Nobody for them to focus on. They could, and by the way, they're going to scream up and down about how that's not true. Prove it, ladies. Prove how that's not true because we've got overwhelming evidence that says it is true. But no, you have no proof. Women have no proof, guys. They have no proof that this isn't true. And they don't, the real reason is because they don't want to believe it's true. They want to stay in fantasy, they want to stay away from reality. The truth hurts. It's an old saying, guys. And reality hurts too as well. It really hurts the Western women quite a bit. Five stages of sadness, grief, <laughs> misery. Oh boy. And by the way, guys, I'm so glad a lot of you guys are avoiding these women because it's going to save you so much in terms of headaches, heartaches, anger. You guys, you, misery loves company. If you guys stick with these women, you are really, really, really... You're, you're taking a massive risk. And not only that, would you really want to be with one of these women that's so goddamn miserable just because you want to get, you know, just get laid or whatever? It's not a good idea. The best thing that you guys could do is stay on your purpose. Enjoy yourselves. You are never going to have a shortage of women, guys. You know, when I was younger, I used to always think, oh, there's going to be a shortage of women. <laughs> I used to think, oh man, I gotta get all the fine girls now and all this stuff. Guys, they're they're just they're constantly recycled. They're constantly recycled, not just with in the dating marketplace, sorry for the wind. Not just in the dating marketplace, but they are recycled in the fact that these fine girls that you see when you're in your teens, your twenties, your thirties, there's gonna be replicas of them later on down the line. Because guys, there's such a massive amount of people in the world that eventually you're gonna find one that looks exactly like that hot chick you knew 5, 10, 15 years ago. I know that sounds bizarre, but if you look at, you know, when you study genetics, my mom was a biogeneticist, she did all that stuff. Uh, she did cures for diseases and all this crap. Fascinating, huh? But anyway, essentially what happens is, at past a certain point in time, you start, you know, you're gonna replicate certain you know, facial characteristics and certain body characteristics. I've seen guys that look exactly like me in my lifetime, not far, which was crazy. They look like exact replicas of me. I'm like, what the fuck are you my long lost brother or cousin? I'm scratching my head going, what the fuck? Very odd, huh? But anyway, the same goes for the little ladies, right? So maybe like you saw some beautiful woman and you were in high school and she's getting rad through and all this other crap. Well, guys, 10, 20, 30 years later, even five years, you may see a woman that reminds you exactly of her or looks a lot like her, is very pretty like her. And that's why I never want you guys to get hang up, hung up on women. I know they're a major distraction, major distraction, because testosterone is a bitch. It really is. But you're going to definitely get these women maybe five, 10 times over in your lifetime, guys, as you focus more and more on your purpose because women are just a byproduct of all your estrogens. That's what they are. They are not the main source of your happiness at all. And that's, a, that's, that's the biggest thing I've learned in life, guys. Women are not a source of happiness at all. In fact, they're normally a source of headaches. As much as a lot of women get pissed when I say this, they know it's true. They're a source of headaches. They're a source of misery, of annoyance, of, you know, flightiness and... Um, unpredictability and emotions they're all over the map guys and that does not bode well for us what bodes well for us is sticking to what makes us happy to sticking to all the things that we get enjoyment from and letting the women come as a byproduct a lot of you guys want to get in relationships and that's why I'm not as hardcore 
about you should never be in a relationship and all this. I, I don't necessarily agree with that because a lot of you guys want to have kids in the long run. You want to settle down in the long run. I don't see anything... I don't see anything wrong with that, gentlemen. What I see, what I have a problem with is doing that in the United States or any Western country because you do not have the legal protection that you need. You don't. No matter if you get, well, you can get a prenup. Right. You need to look more into the uh, cohabitation laws, the domestic violence laws, a lot of laws that you can't control, guys. Now, with that being said, there is no purpose, perfect solution. But if you are going to, if you're going to be with a foreign traditional woman, it's best to do this in her country where you're going to be much more protected. And not only that, she's going to be a lot, lot happier, right? Because if she comes to our country, to a foreign country, women don't do well with that, guys. They get really bent out of shape. They're constantly told by other Western women that they shouldn't be here, um, that they should be divorced. Uh, Western women are very jealous creatures. They love to self, they love to sabotage. Women are agents of chaos. They love to be saboteurs. And they're definitely going to try to do that with your foreign traditional woman. So it's best to go to their country. It's best to be with them over there. And now I know that's not ideal for you. You'd rather stay in your country. But you got to look at your quality of life, guys. You have to really take a good, hard look at your quality of life. Not all of us can afford multi-million dollar mansions and all this other crap and high-priced divorce attorneys and all this. You gotta look at your quality of life. At the end of the day, that's really more important than anything else, the quality you get out of it. And foreign traditional women are the highest quality. By f There's no doubt about that. I mean, I don't get any debates from that. The Western women just shut the fuck up. <laughs> when I say that, you know, the foreign traditional are the highest quality, there, there's no debating. There's no debating. Well, they'll say stupid shit like, well, what about your mom? What about your family? You don't know my mama. You don't know my grandmother. You don't know how high quality they are or low quality. And by the way, if they were low quality, I'd call it out. Because over here, we don't lie about that stuff. We don't give you guys a bunch of fluff and, you know, you know, pie in the sky nonsense. It's more about reality. That's what this channel is all about. Getting you guys back to reality out of the fluff, out of the matrix, out of the freaking plugged in, you know, blue pill nonsense. Now, some of that stuff is going to be hard to accept. Some reality is going to be hard to accept. Other parts are not going to be as hard to accept. But I want you guys to know that's what this channel is about. And that's why we focus so much on success, on winning. And it's all different for all of us. It's not always about about it. You need to be an entrepreneur. Ha ha ha. I'm dating coach Dan. You know what you need is you need to be an entrepreneur. You need to quit your nine to five job, even if you have a crappy idea. Ha ha ha. You need to buy my dating coach course. Why do you want to go overseas? What the hell's wrong with you? Are you beta or something? Ha ha ha. You saw me on my motorcycle last time, and I was showing you guys how to be alpha. You gotta be alpha. You gotta have a construction job. You can't have a construction job. You need to be the foreman. You gotta be alpha. <laughs> oh, Diddy Coach Dad. $2,000 for my upgraded course on how to be ultra alpha, by the way. <laughs> oh, you need a dating coach in America and in Western society to get garbage women. That makes a, you know, that really makes a lot of sense. You need a dating coach just to get somebody who's been ran through. Who's got a bad attitude? <laughs> She's not a virgin anymore. Oh, hell no. She hasn't been a virgin for 20 years. <laughs> Dating coach, Dan. I know better. I'm going to talk down to you. That's my job. <laughs> uh, kill the bait inside. <laughs> uh, don't work hard. Don't have... You know, what you should do is you, you should become a lot like the entitled women that I have you go after. <laughs> uh, be alpha. Everybody's an alpha. Alpha means one, but everybody's alpha <laughs> or beta. <laughs> it's another way for me to shame you into submission, just like the Western girls do. I'm going to shame you to being alpha. You got to have the muscles. You got to, you got to, you got to be an entrepreneur and be in a car. Entrepreneur in a car. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dating coach. Dating coach Dan is a maniac, guys. <laughs> dating coach. Dan, dating coach Dan has a Western wife. Isn't that, that, isn't that amazing? So he's all, dating coach Dan is, is interesting because what he is, he's alpha here, but then he's a beta at home 
with his Western wife, right? Do you see what I'm saying? <laughs> he's not a he, he's a dating coach who's been married for 20 years. He knows nothing about the dating landscape now. Yeah, <laughs> dating coach. I don't know anything about actual modern dating. I only know about past dating from the, fuck, uh, the 1990s, 30 years ago. <laughs> oh, I know everything. I know everything about that type of dating. But you know, social media and all this—that doesn't matter. You just got to have game. Just approach, approach a hundred women a day. Put it down on the spreadsheet. Check it off. <laughs> uh, that's why I chuckle so often because I have, I have no actual realistic solutions for you guys. I'm just going to have you go out there. And by the way, if you can't approach 100 women a day, you're definitely beta and you're definitely afraid of rejection. <laughs> oh, isn't that, I'm married. I've been married for the past 25, almost 30 years now to a Western woman who snipped off my balls. And this is my way of, uh, what is it called? <laughs> uh, see, I'm backpedaling now. This is my way of overcompensating. <laughs> oh, it's by cu- by cutting you guys down, calling you beta. That's my way of overcompensating <laughs> and being alpha. When I get home, I say yes, dear. Okay, honey, honey, do. That's what I do. I'm dating Coach Dan. Honey, do. I do. I have my honey do list. Honey, I'll do whatever you say. <laughs> dating Coach Dan. <laughs> oh, dating Coach Dan is a maniac. He's been married. He's guys. He's been married almost thirty years to his Western bitch of. She pulled the bait and switch on him, and she said, "I, you better do what I say." And now he's the beta. Isn't that interesting? So now he, what he does is he tells you guys to be alpha, right? He's telling you to be alpha. <laughs> he's telling you to be alpha, even though he's not even alpha in his own household. Isn't that messed up, guys? We shouldn't laugh at dating coach Dan. He's 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 a good guy. He just got he just got swindled. He got the bait and switch. Guys, you got to watch the Marriage Wheel from Coach Greg. Ad- Look up the Marriage Wheel from Coach Greg Adams. It's spot on. The bait and switch is coming, gentlemen. With Western women, it is always in play. Not sometimes, always. No, you can't say that. Yes, guys, always. They are going to bait and switch you somehow. You're going to get sex every day when we get married. Then it starts to level off. Then it turns into nothing. Or the bait and switch is going to be, you know, I, we've been married for 30 years. Now I want to, you know, we already had kids. Now I want to go off and have my fun. Now, why is the bait and switch always in play, gentlemen? Because Western women do their research. They're not stupid. Have I ever said Western women are dumb? Never. They are literally encouraged to divorce you guys to break up with you they're encouraged by society by their friends and that's guys this is why i don't hate them i'm literally saying if that was us we'd probably do the fucking same thing the issue arises when nobody puts the smack down on these bitches that's where i have a problem that's where i say no you're not getting away with that shit no you can't do this no that's where we need to be much, much stronger if we're going to live in Western society. Now, for me, you guys already know, I'm out of here. I'm going to stay a little while longer until everything's settled, right? Probably live, probably move to Colorado or Nevada. Um, there's some really nice places, right? Do that. But then after that, why do I need to be here? And yes, I'm definitely going to do vlogs from overseas, guys. They are coming. I can't wait. God, I wish I had this. I wish I had vlogged last time, guys, from Hong Kong, but this is before I even had a channel. Guys, you would have been like, holy shit. That is fucking awesome. So much fun. But I'm definitely going to do that. I wonder what will happen. I bet the little Chineses are all going to be staring and be like. (laughs) But I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm definitely going to do it. Maybe even do some interviews and do them on another channel. I think that would be really cool. I think you guys are going to be fascinated. Because I like to ask the hard questions, get to know people. You know, I have a good way of interviewing, getting to know them, understanding them, especially the traditional foreign women. I think it'd be interesting for you guys. I think it'd be very interesting for you guys. And just foreign women in general, their outlook. And of course, they'll lie in the beginning. They always do to try to be, you know, very shy. They don't want to say anything mean or upset the apple cart. But after that, guys, I think it's going to be interesting. I'll keep you guys posted. Don't worry. But for now, as you can see, the Western women are really hurt. 
They're in a world of hurt. They are in five stages of misery at this point in time. From their teens to their 20s to their 30s, 40s, 50s and beyond, guys. It is a clusterfuck. And there's, there's no real way for them to fix this. That's the sad part for them. And, of course, they're going to buck at that because nobody wants to hear that there's no options. But, what, guys, what options are there really for Westerwood? What, what can they do? The only way that they're able, going to be t- able to turn it around is that they put in serious hard work. And changing the laws, etc. They don't want to do that stuff, guys. Most of them couldn't care less. They'd rather stay in delusion and denial because that's what the majority of society tells them. So what incentive is there for them to get out of this? Nothing. As you can see, guys, Western ladies are in a world of hurt. And now a lot of you guys may say, well, do you enjoy this? Is it fun for you? Not really, guys. I think it would be absolutely incredible if we didn't have to go overseas or get with foreign traditional women who come to the states or come to our countries that would be absolutely incredible if we had fantastic women where we live obviously i wouldn't be pushing so much foreign traditional but we got to be realistic if you guys want relationships in the long run this is going to be your best bet and the best part is we have the options not the little wet not the little western ladies they don't have the options. We have the options, which I've got over in my men have more options than women's videos. We have a lot more options than they do, unfortunately. For them. Fortunately for us. Because <laughs> we just keep getting better over time, guys. We keep increasing in productivity. We keep increasing in value. And they just keep decreasing. A women's value literally goes like this, guys. Round 16 starts to go like this all the way until they're dead. And some of you may disagree, oh, 16 to 2 young. That's their peak fertility, gentlemen. Now a guy, here's his whole life, constantly elevated. I don't care if you're an incel virgin. I don't care if you don't make any money. It doesn't matter. Your value still increases with time. Why? Because you get a lot of the things that women want. Guidance, a lot of the, you know, wisdom. That stuff comes from gentlemen. Leadership. A lot of you guys discount your abilities to lead women. Women don't want to be led by other women, guys. How many women have you met in your lifetime who wanted to be led by other women? Uh Uh-uh. They hate each other. They fight internally way more than we do. We may get pissed at each other sometimes and punch each other in the face, but we can move on and get along to the point where, you know, you have a pretty calm cohesive system going they can't do that guys now do you see why they need it so badly why they're so lost (laughs) poor little western ladies but we got to let them fall flat on their faces gentlemen there's nothing really we could do for them now if they turn it around fantastic highly unlikely uh but if they do great but you guys already know they're way too far in denial to uh, get out of any of that so for now just gotta let them fail let them do their thing. Move on. We're all going to be a lot, lot happier when the Western women um, have just gotten out of the picture. We don't have to listen to them with all their anger. But yeah, misery? Oh, yes. 100% miserable? Pretty close to it. Let them be, gentlemen. Let them be angry. Let them be pissed off. We're going to keep kicking ass. We're going to keep taking these. And we're going to take over. <laughs> evil white man left anyway gentlemen until next time i'm definitely watching you let's get to it